Hi there, Dominic here with a word about the clone tool in Modo. When you go to the duplicate tab, you'll find the tool Polygon Clone, Clone Tool. When you right click, you see you have a clone tool, an instance clone tool, and a replica clone tool. They all basically do the same thing. Instead of the clone tool actually creates G separate geometry pieces, the instance clone creates instances and the replica, of course, replicas. So let's see this in action. First I'm going to make a plane, I'm going to my basic tab, click on the cube and drag out a plane on my work plane. You see right now my work plane has been aligned with my ground plane. I'm going to center its position on all axes. Uh, set its size to x to 1 meter and its size to z to half a meter, so 0.5, like that, and now drop the tool, so I have a plane. Go to my duplicate tab, click on clone, and click in my viewport, and what happens is, you see over here where I clicked, I get these transform handles. Now, when I click and drag, for instance, in the z-axis, you see I get a number of clones in the z-direction and the number of clones is being dictated by this field over here so when I increase this, you see I get more clones now by default when there is no action center you see everywhere I click my handles appear and I'm going to press the end key to reset my work plane Everywhere I click, these handles appear, and this can be a bit annoying when working with the clone tool. So I'm going to drop the tool, press Ctrl Z to undo. My work plane has also been reset. Press the end key to reset my work plane. Okay, like that. And before using the clone tool, I like to set my action center to selection center auto axis. Like that. Now when I use the clone tool, and click in the viewport, you see, no matter where I click, I'm clicking all over my viewport right now, my handles stay aligned with the geometry. And again, when I drag out these handles, you see, I get seven clones, as been specified in the number of clones. I can drag out in several directions, and each time you see the offsets change over there, just like that. And I've can of course do it numerically, so for instance if I were to say offset x1 then you see when I go to a top view it's exactly 1 meter and the ground plane is exactly 1 meter 1 meter in that direction press control spacebar and go back to my perspective view now it's a simple plane so it does not have uh, depth if you will this, this geometry, but my Z was uh, 500 millimeters, so I'm going to say 500 millimeters in Z for instance, and now control space to go to my top view, you see they are perfectly aligned, if you will, control space to go back to my perspective view. I can also scale the clones, so if I were to say for instance I want the clones to be larger in X and it will be, uh, for instance when I say to, to 2 now that's a bit much, I'm going to set it to 1.2 you see each clone gets scaled with 20% in the X direction only and I want to say it also scale for instance 1.5 in Z then each clone gets a scaling of 50% in Z and, and I'm going to reset the, the scale back to 1 for feasibility so when I, I can also rotate it so for instance rotate it on let's say the Z axis in 20 degrees then you see each clone gets a rotation of 20 degrees when I set for instance my offsets back to zero and I drag out s simply on the x-axis like that you see it gets rotated and of course while this tool is active I can manipulate 
the handles over here or I can set it numerically. Now we have an option between. When it is off, you see that when I zoom in over here, you have, when I drag one of these handles, you have that purple line which kind of represents my offset, like you see, offset X. And when the option between is off, then it's like the that each sub, uh, s uh, s subsequent clone gets that same offset that you see from here to there. When I set it to between, then when I drag this, you see it's as if all clones are being placed in between the start point and the end point. So it can be to your advantage to set it in between, but you'll have to calculate your offset differently. So for instance, if I set everything from rotation back to zero, now with in between, if I want everything to be nicely aligned, I will have to keep dragging out and I will have to say, well, I have seven clones, it's one meter long, so I have to set my offset to seven meters and now everything is perfectly aligned. And I could say merge vertices and then now when I would drop the tool, I would get one continuous merged mesh item. When I set between off, then my offset, then now it seems like everything has disappeared, but no, shift A, so you see now my offset is much bigger. So now instead of seven meters, I have to say one meter, like that. And now again, everything has been nicely aligned, if you will. And again, if I merge vertices, these vertices would get merged. I can say it to replace source. Oftentimes you don't want to do this. I'm going to press drop the tool by pressing spacebar, control Z to undo and give this some depth. So selected polygon, shift X to extrude, right click in the viewport, extrude it out and I'm going to set it to for instance um, 200 millimeters. Okay, drop everything, go by my basic tab, center selected all. Now, all this geometry is, selling, is uh, centered on all axes. Going back to my duplicate tab, press the clone tool, click in my viewport, drag it out. So I know it's one meter length, so if I set my offsets in X to one meter, now all these cubes have been perfectly aligned. If I set my offset Y to 200 millimeters, now it's perfectly aligned like that. And of course I could, for instance, set my offset in Z to half a meter. Now if I would say merge vertices then all of these vertices over here they would get merged just like that. I can the replace source becomes more visible if you for instance give it a scale let's say that I want to scale everything in all axis on 20 percent when I set my replace source you see this w this first one now scales a bit also but most of the time you do not want to replace source because now I have a nice increment of 20% when I replace source then the first two apparently are the same size Th this may be what you want and over here we have source active meshes so when it's set to active meshes then the clone tool will use the geometry in your active item container that you see here that which is selected in the item list or I could say that to a specific mesh or to all background layers a random background layer so uh, if you have several uh, items over here in background layer then it will choose one it will get random or a preset shape and with preset shape then you can use uh, a profile and when it's set to a specific mesh, then mesh item becomes available and then I can choose a mesh over here, but right now I only have one mesh item, so I cannot ch choose between other meshes, so active meshes. And I'm going to set my scale back to one on all axes, drop the tool, duplicate, clone tool, click 
drag it out on the Z for instance and I know that my Z length is 500 millimeters so when I set it over here to 0.5 now I have a number of meshes they're all separate as you see when you double click on them and so the clone tool allows to rapidly create very interesting mesh items so again clone tool click in the viewport and remember my action center was set to selection center auto axis you don't have to do that but you see when I click in the viewport my axis stay nicely around you see a bit of a difference because I can click and drag to haul over here but clicking does not result in my handles being placed somewhere else and this is something I prefer with the clone tool So, like that, hide my work plane. So, the clone tool, very interesting tool in Modo 601. Thanks for watching, this was Dominic, bye for now.